Hey, I'm Kyle from Depot, and have you ever been playing rock, paper, scissors against an API and thought, wow, I wish this was faster in Australia? No, of course not. What? But you probably have more interesting things going on with your real API than we do, and we want that to be fast everywhere. Today, we're going to be building an app and deploying it to Fly.io's global compute platform using the new built-in Depot Builder for super fast deployments. Fly.io, for those who haven't checked it out yet, is a cloud computing platform that makes it easy for us developers to package up our code and run it in 35 regions around the world. Under the hood, this is done with Docker containers and super fast firecracker micro VMs and a lot more fancy stuff that maybe we'll go into in another video. Recently, we partnered with Fly so that you can use Depot's accelerated build technology built right into Fly for even faster builds. More on that soon, but let's build our app. We're gonna build a simple rock, paper, scissors game API with Nest.js and create some automated documentation using Swagger. When we're done, you'll be able to call the API directly or test it out in the Swagger UI. Nest.js is a great modern framework for creating efficient and scalable server-side applications with a lot of best practice architecture principles built right in. Now, you can clone the repository from the link in the description or follow along as we build it from scratch. In a new terminal, install the Nest.js CLI globally and create a new project named Rock, Paper, Scissors. I'm going to use PNPM, but you can use whatever package manager you want. We're gonna CD into the project, and before we really get started, let's go ahead and install the Nest Swagger module. We'll also use the Nest CLI to generate some scaffolding code for us. We need a new controller and a service for our game. After those are created, we'll take a look at our code. In our source folder, we have a main.ts, some boilerplate code for the default app module, and a folder named game with a controller in service from the CLI command that we just ran. Let's start in the main.ts file. The main.ts acts just as an entry point for our app. We instantiate our app from the app module and start listening on port 3000. This is also where we can add middleware like the Swagger module we installed earlier. We use Swagger's document builder to define some metadata about our API that will appear in the Swagger UI. And we pass that to the Swagger module to create a document and serve it at the forward slash API endpoint. If you launch a dev server now, you should see the Swagger UI on localhost port 3000 forward slash API. There isn't much here yet, but you can already see a section for our game controller waiting for us to add some roots. Routes? Roots. Routes. Roots. Ruts. Nest.js breaks up our application into modules, and each module can have controllers and services. We can skip over creating our own module and just add our controller and service to the default app module. A controller is where we can define all of our routes and request handling logic, and the service is where we'll put all of the business logic. Let's start in a game service and get the game logic out of the way. In our game service, we want to create a method that we'll call to play a round of rock, paper, scissors. We'll create a method called play, and it'll take a move as a string and return some result. You know, I can already see that we're going to want some types, so let's take a quick detour and create a new game.types.ts file where we can define some shared types. We need a type called move that will be a string of either rock, paper, or scissors. And game result will be the object that we expect to return from our play method. We'll return the result of the game, the player's move, and the computer's move. Back in our game service file, we can import those types and use them in our play method. For the logic of the game, we'll create an array of valid moves and a map of what each move beats. Then we can randomly select a move for the computer and compare it against the player's move for each possible outcome, draw, win, or lose. Now that we have our game logic, let's give it a root in our controller so that it can be called from the API. In game.controller.ts, we'll import our game service and create a new root that we'll call the play method. Nest uses decorators to define routes in our controller methods, and we can also use them to add additional metadata for Swagger. Create a get method named play that takes a query parameter called move and returns a game result. Finally, we need to add our game service and controller to the app module so that Nest knows about them. In app.module.ts, you'll see that there's an array of controllers and providers, and we can add our game controller and game service to these arrays. That should be everything we need to get our rock, paper, scissors API up and running. Try running the dev server again and navigate to the Swagger UI. You should see now that there is a get method for forward slash game forward slash play, and that takes a query parameter called move. You can test the API right in the Swagger UI by clicking the try it out button and entering a move. Ooh, so close. All right, so we have our API or app and we want an easy way to deploy it to the cloud. We're gonna deploy to fly.io. This is going to make our user experience consistently fast no matter where our users are. Fly can automatically infer how to build most projects, but to maximize the build performance, we can supply our own Docker file. Let's create a super optimized Docker file for a Node and TypeScript project with PNPM as the package manager. In the root of our project, create a new file named Dockerfile. We'll do a video on a deeper dive into writing the perfect Docker file in the near future, but we do have a great blog post linked in the description below. But for now, we'll do a quick overview 
And remember, the code is in the description. When you're building Docker images, we try to do everything we can to maximize the chance that our image layers are cached between builds. We can use multi-stage builds to separate out the dependencies from the final image, keeping the final image small, and maximizing the chance that each layer is cached by reducing the number of involved files that could trigger a cache miss. First, we define some common base image for all of our stages. We'll use the node LTS Alpine rather than the default node image because the Alpine version is under 300 megabytes while the default Ubuntu image is over a gigabyte. In the next stage, we'll handle all of our dependencies. We wanna keep this separate from our build because we don't need to rebuild our dependencies every time we change our code, and we can isolate it here for multiple stages to use. In the build stage, we copy our source code into the image and mount the dependencies from the previous stage before building the app. In the final stage, we copy only the dependencies from the dependency stage and the built app from the build stage. Lastly, we expose port 3000 and set the command to run the app with node. And we're done. All right, before we deploy, let's make sure that everything still works locally from the Docker file. Let's build the image with the tag rock, paper, scissors and run it on port 3000. Then open the browser and navigate to localhost port 3000 forward slash API and you should see the Swagger UI again, just like before. Play another round of rock, paper, scissors for good measure and we're ready to deploy. Okay. All right, let's deploy our app to fly.io and we're gonna use the new built-in depot builder. Fly.io will take the Docker file that we just created, build it and deploy it to their global network. And now Fly has the new flag on the deploy command that allows us to specify depot as the builder. The depot builder uses our accelerated Docker build technology inside of Fly.io's ultra fast machines to build our Docker file with the maximum possible speed. To deploy for the first time, run fly launch dash dash depot. The Fly CLI will automatically generate a Fly Toml file with the closest region to you pre-selected. You can type Y to confirm and the app will begin building and deploying. If you look at the terminal output, you'll see that the image is being built using the depot builder. In subsequent deploys, you can use the fly deploy dash dash depot command to rebuild and redeploy the app using the cache layers we just created for nearly instantaneous deploys. I like to add a deploy script to my package.json file for convenience and consistency. When the deploy completes, you'll be given a URL where your app is live. Launch the URL in the browser and add forward slash API to the end to see the deployed Swagger UI. Go ahead and play best two out of three against the AI, this time in the cloud. And that's all there is to deploying a Nest.js API to fly.io using the new built-in depot builder. Now you can go in and add more regions or set up auto scaling strategies, but that's a topic for another video. Give the depot builder on Fly a try. It's already built in for Fly users and it has no additional cost or even setup. It's just a flag. The links to everything we talked about in this video, including the source code, are in the description. Again, I'm Kyle T from Depot, and we have more great content on our channel. So please, before you leave to watch one of those awesome videos, give this one a like and don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.